Grateful Dead fans. Uh, this is a lesson. Um, Solo and Sugary really, they're, they're great lessons out there about it. it you're going to be using an E major scale on top of uh, Sugary. And uh, just like all my other videos, you're going to be hitting the E with the E and the B with the B. But that's not what, uh, that's not what this is about, excuse me. Um, what this is about is every time I listen to a live, not every time, but many times I listen to live versions, uh, Jerry does this awesome little like chord soloing technique, all right? And it's, I just want to show you what it is because it's such a beautiful way to build up the solo until he starts soloing. And I've always loved listening to it. I literally would just kind of stop what I was doing, kind of like listen, be like, that is so beautiful. So here's what's happening. Uh, very, very simple uh, in understanding, but let's execute the technique, which is the chord progression is going from B to E. So all he's doing is he's finding as many different, and he's sticking with, by the way, he's sticking with the E string. It's very hard to see. I got to change my strings, huh? E string, B string, and G string. All right. Those are the three strings he's focusing on because they are, they sit on top of the band. They're the highest notes, thinnest notes. So we'll hear them more. And he's going to be finding all the chords that he can possibly find on the way up and just hitting them in this triplet fashion. So let's talk, here we go. First chord is a B, and the first B chord that he can find, that you can find, that I can find, is gonna be the second fret of the E string, ring finger is fourth fret of the B string, and middle finger fourth fret of the um, G string. And we have this plucking pattern, up, up, down, up, up, down. Okay, so here's your B. Now we need to go to an E, and there's an E close by. It looks like a D chord, but it's up on the fourth fret, so it's four, five, four. I will have a chart available in the link below if you need it, okay? Now again, that plucking pattern is up, up, down, up, up, down. That pattern, um, that's I guess called economic picking, or economy picking, uh, and you're just keeping the pick always moving towards the direction of the action, all right? Next B chord we can find, you're gonna put your first finger, slap it down right there on the fourth fret of G, B, and E, and you're gonna put your pinky on, now you could put just your pinky on the seventh fret, okay? But you can also, of the E string, but you can also put on the seventh fret of the E and the B, and I, I just happen to like this one better. Okay, so we have a B chord. to this. You can do any mixing match. And here's an E chord. Now another B chord is going to be 7, 7, and 8. Now we need an E chord that's close by. We have 7, 9, 9. There's an E chord. You can hear it coming together, right? Simple lesson, but we're keeping moving forward. Then we need another, um, let's see, that's a B chord. All right, okay, so we need an E chord. Same kind, so ninth fret, bar, 9, 9, 9. And I'm going to put the pinky on the 12th fret. Now I said um, when we're doing the other one down there, I'm going to point um, that you can cover up both. But this one I like just covering up the E string on the 12th fret. So you have 12, 9, 9. And then we have the last B chord, which is going to, remember, pause. I know I'm going fast. Is the D shaped chord up on that 11th fret. 12th fret is on that root node. And if you need an E chord, finally the last E chord if you need it, it's going to be 12th fret bar, 12, 12, 13. So here it is really quickly, I'm going to shout it out, then we'll talk more. But here it is, let's see, there's the E, and I'm starting on the B's, I have a B chord, E chord, back to this, and an E chord, okay, I'm a different B, here we go, back to this E chord. E. And back to this B. 
worry. Oh, I was about to stop the video. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so you can mix and match any one of those E's and B's and, uh, to your, your heart's delight. Alright? And again, all I'm doing up here, I'm not going to get into this right now because this is more about Jerry's chord soloing. Um, but this is, it's just an E major scale and you're hitting the E's with the E's and the B's with the B's. We'll talk about the chromatic runs uh, later on um, because I want you to focus on this. But there's a cool thing you can do. Um, now, if you can imagine the E string, now this this song is in E major, it goes from the 5, the B, to the 1, okay? It's an E major, some can say B mixolydian, but it's not really a key, it's just a mode. But anyway, so we need an E major scale, right? So I'll show you this. So on the E major scale, on the E string, you have open E, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 5th fret, right? and you'll see why we're doing this. And then you're going to have 7th fret, 9th fret, 11th fret, 12th fret. The reason I'm showing this is when you're playing your chords, if you can manage to hit any of those notes, now Jerry really comes out to play. All right? So you want to use your chords, and then you want to try and find those notes in the high E string while you're playing the chords. You get this beautiful Jerry Garcia sound. And all of a sudden, you're going to start playing your chords without just any notes from the E major uh, scale and the high E string. And you can really start hearing some of that Jerry like playfulness or, or the springtime happy sound that only he could get. All right. So I hope this all made sense. There'll be a chart below discussing your chord shapes and the E major scale. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this was a quick and efficient lesson. I hope it brought something new to you, uh, my fellow dead fans. All right, rock and roll. Bye-bye.